All right, guys, today we're going to talk about solving absolute value inequalities. When an inequality contains an absolute value expression, it can be written as a compound inequality. The inequality, the absolute value of x is less than 5, describes all real numbers whose distance is from 0 less than 5 units or greater. Here's why. Absolute value of 5 you can put negative 5 in for your variable, whoops, or you can put a positive 5 because absolute value is distance. So each one is 5 units from 0. So to write that, you would write it as a compound inequality or use the word and. Okay? And that's what I just explained, this right here. So let's try one. Just like when we solved absolute value equations, you have to isolate your absolute value on one side of that inequality, okay? So the absolute value is not isolated. So the inverse of subtraction is addition. So on the left side of this inequality, I have the absolute value of x. On the right side, I have 2, okay? So what does this mean when we're talking about the inequality? It means that your solution set are all these real numbers. We are not going to include the negative 2 and 2 because it says less than. Alright, so on this one I like to graph it before I actually write the compound inequality. So when I write it, negative 2 is going to be less than our solution set, which is less than positive 2. Okay, on number two, our absolute value symbol is isolated. So what we need to do is we need to put x minus 1 less than or equal to 2. x minus 1 is greater than or equal to negative 2. Okay, why did I switch this inequality symbol. Well guys, if we were to take this negative 1 out and graph it, you have negative 2 and you have 2. So x has to be greater than negative 2 but less than positive 2, okay? So that's how you set up your two cases. Remember when we had our two cases with equations? So let's go ahead and solve this. We need to add 1 to both sides. So I have x is less than or equal to 3. We need to add 1 to both sides. So I have x is greater than or equal to negative 1. So now when I actually graph this one, this was just an example of why you have to switch that inequality symbol. I have negative 1 and I have positive 3. And we're going to include negative 1. x is greater than negative 1 and x is less than positive 3. So my solution set is all real numbers between those two integers. Okay, just a little helpful hint. Just as you do when solving absolute value equations, you first isolate the absolute value expression when solving absolute value inequalities. All right, on this one, we need to isolate our absolute value symbol by dividing by 2. So I have the absolute value of x is less than or equal to 3. Okay, so I have x is less than or equal to 3, and I have x is greater than or equal to negative 3. Remember when we graphed that? Negative 3, 3, we are including those numbers and your solution set is all real numbers between negative 3 and 3. Okay, I'm going to be quiet. See if y'all can work this one on your own. If you get stuck, look at the computer.
Okay, there's your solution for number four, and that's all we're doing today on the absolute value inequalities. So uh, we'll see you tomorrow, unless it's a Friday. Guys, have a good one.